Yo, welcome back to the Upset Special for a week two edition after week one went so wrong in so many ways. And it's not, it, it's all of our faults as a collaborative effort, and we'll get into that. But start off, we got Dave back with me. You went 0 2 last week, Dave. So big ups to you. Same record as me. We both did very well. Parker's on yep. with us this week. He wasn't here last week, so it's good that we have a guy coming in here with no wins, no losses. That's huge for the brand. Ready to be humbled. I am undefeated, yes. I'll take that. Undefeated, never lost. To uh, <laughs> recap to recap last week, I had South Alabama over Tulane. I got smacked in the mouth. I had Northern Iowa over Iowa State. I got smacked in the mouth. Dave, North Texas over Cal, Central Michigan over Michigan State. You got smack them out. Well, Central Michigan looked good for a little bit, and then they didn't. They, and they, they, North they, Texas was never close. No, not not at all. Uh, Jake had Boise State over Washington, Colorado State over Washington State. He got smacked in the mouth. Josh had Hawaii over Stanford and San Jose State over Oregon State. To, I, I won't say he got smacked in the mouth. I'll say he got hit with the uppercut and was laying there for, for quite a bit. All of us got smoked. All of you fools went against the Pac-12, the Pac-13 and O. Ridiculous for you guys to do that. And, and, and like, talking about the other picks that we almost uh, put up, mine went 2-0. and Or no, Illinois and Duke. So, uh, not great it's there. We, we weren't picking the right ones. So, we're going to do that this week. I was gonna say the right ones this week. It's a six and zero mindset this week. That's what it is yeah. between the three of us. Six and zero. Eight and zero. We might not have a fourth, but we'll have a plan. I've got something to pick. It'll be all good in this hood. Before we get into our picks, please make sure to like and subscribe. It would help us out a lot. Comment below what upsets you think are going down week two, and let's get into this. Parker, you could go first, man. You're new to the show, so let's go with you. Sounds good. I will, uh, I'll start it off semi tame, uh, at the beginning, but I really liked and was really surprised, frankly, uh, with how Cincinnati looked last week, especially on offense. Emory Jones, five touchdowns, uh, through the air, 345 passing yards, probably the best I've seen him play in college, all things considered. Uh, as of right now, again, it's all against Eastern Kentucky, of course, but they're on the road against Pitt, getting seven and a half. Pitt also looked good last week. Uh, Phil Yurkovich had a great start uh, after transferring over from uh, Boston College. I like – I would. the biggest concern I had for Cincinnati entering the season was the offense. They returned enough pieces on defense to tread water there, uh, in, especially in the Big 12, I feel like, but I just didn't think they are going to be able to score with teams. I think they can go on the road. I think seven and a half first off is probably too big to be giving Cincinnati. Um but I think Emory Jones, if he keeps playing how he did, I think him versus Yurkovich will be a great quarterback duel. It's going to be a close game regardless. But I like Cincinnati to be able to, to walk in there, take that upset, and probably enter that Oklahoma game undefeated at home, uh, which I believe is week four, uh, which would be very interesting. Maybe a college game day potential spot. I hate that game. I just hate that game. <laughs> like, I don't want to – isn't that like the CW Network game too? Like, oh golly. yeah, the it, very well could be. it definitely the is. Game. Like, we're we're talking about a straight up sickos game there, and I don't know if I want any part of watching that. Um, shockingly, I might be diving into this Texas Alabama game that people are talking about. I'll have to see what the hype is around there. So I'm going to be completely in the dark for the Cincy pit game. I will say some pretty good corners on display here. MJ Devonshire from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Yes. Aliquippa to pit to NFL pipeline as Darrell Revis did it. So look out for that. Um, and I, I really like Sammy Anderson on Cincinnati. I know he got banged up in week one, but if he's healthy and ready to go, he's going to be a really, really good cornerback for Cincy in the future. I really Dave, have nothing yeah. to, uh, I have nothing to add on that. Cause All right. This, that's just a stinky game to me, but that's where you find the upsets in the stinky games. Exactly. Perfect. You got to, you got to search in the sewers for, for the upsets. Yeah, that you that, need, so. That's, I mean, that's, that's definitely one I could see happening. Yeah, All and, right, I, and we've got... seen 
I was about to say real quick, we've seen in the past Pitt also lose some weird early season games. This might be one of them, mm-hmm. but I digress. What do you got for us, Dave? Oh, I'm starting off. I, I want to say it's hot, but I really don't think it's that hot because there's no point spread yet. So I, my team should be an underdog, but I'm taking a team that got upset last week to get upset once again this week. I'm taking the Holy Cross Crusaders to go into Boston College and beat Boston College. My guy, Matthew Sluka, Long Island guy. I know his brother. Um, went to Kellenberg where a lot of my family went, where uh, a lot of my friends went. And he is an FBS quarterback playing for Holy Cross. He got looks. FBS teams wanted him. He's a running quarterback. He runs all over the place. He led this team to the quarterfinals, I believe, last year of the SEC set. That's- FCS playoffs, Holy Cross made a run. They're a very good FCS team, and they could hang in with a very bad Boston College team. Boston College, look, I know we like Northern Illinois. We think Northern Illinois will be a good MAC team, but BC should not be losing games to Northern Illinois in their home opener. And they looked poopy. They don't really have a quarterback. Um, Holy Cross is Jordan Fuller. They ran for four or five touchdowns, and they stomped Merrimack on the road last week. Uh, so, yeah, look for Holy Cross to uh, – I believe Holy Cross is in Massachusetts as well. I'm it's pretty in, sure. So it's like, in Worcester. Yeah, so there's going to be, like, a good amount of Holy Cross fans in that building. And expect Matthew Sluka. You, you'll, you'll remember the name after Holy Cross goes into Boston College and Boston College loses the second in a row. Yeah, so this game was actually on my radar as well. We, I mean – Sluka might be a friend of 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 the Padalano family, but he, friend, of the, friend of the yeah, program. Yeah, friend friend of the program. He's also a ginger, so you know he's on my radar. I see him slinging the rock uh, the last few years. He's a really good player. He's underrated. I know he had a really really good twenty twenty one season, if I'm not mistaken. See if he could get back to that form. But like he's good. Boston College is going to be dealing with quarterback issues because Moorhead didn't look too too good. Castellanos came in, makes the improbable fourth and five or whatever, running around like it was backyard football and mm-hmm. he was playing for the watermelon heads and converts a first down out of nowhere. Like, BC is going to be dealing with quarterback issues. I think Halfley gets Cam this year. I would have done it last year. I think it'll happen this year, but yeah, I, I like that pick. It was on my radar. I'm not intelligent enough to remember the number that I ranked Holy Cross entering the season, so I could look for that. Yeah, I mean, I I was about to say, I mean, just piling on BC here, that's that's crazy. But, I mean, yeah, with what you saw in the field last week, I would agree with it. And I think that Liam brought up the interesting point, Halfley would be fired this season. I mean, if they lose this game, I could very realistically see him being fired next week or at least in the ensuing two or three weeks. I think – I think they'd be ready to jump ship given how close they were to getting rid of him last season, it seems like. I I would imagine that this would be the final straw. Yeah, so after the Holy Cross game, they're playing Florida State. So maybe you give them that, and then, hey, y'all get eviscerated, then, then we make the change. Uh, yeah. I had Holy Cross ranked number six in my preseason FCS poll for our magazine. So, hey, man. We we all know it. Holy Cross is a good team. I respect that pick, Mr. Dave. For my first pick, you know, I want to – you guys picked on this conference all last week, and I thought it was the most idiotic thing I've ever seen on our on our uh, upset special stuff. And then you – all you fools got dominated by the Pac-12. So I'm going to the Pac-12, and you could give me all of Washington State as they host Wisconsin, and they'll beat Wisconsin for the second straight year. Wazoo's playing a top-20 team here that should not be ranked. They're getting six points at home. They win this game outright. The Cam Ward show, it's here. It's refined. It's looking good. How about the receivers that they have? Kyle Williams, DT Sheffield, they have a few others are all ballers. Their run game's good. The O-line's good. The defense is just criminally underrated as it tends to be now under Jake Dicker. Shaw Smith Wade is an NFL corner in my eyes. I think he should be a top, I think he should be a first round pick, at least top 40, 45, 50, I suppose, to be safe. Uh I really like this Washington State team. I love this Pac 12. And 
I hate the Big Ten West, and I don't like Wisconsin. You guys know how I feel about the spoiled Dairy Ray and Mordecai and the Longo <laughs> acquisition was over uh, overhyped, as was the Mordecai acquisition. And I, I the defense didn't even look too good against a, a middling Mac Buffalo team last week. They really had to rely heavily on Braylon Allen and Chesma Lucy to beat Buffalo. That's kind of concerning to me when you brought in Mordecai, you brought in Longo, and still the run game has to bail you out because Mordecai's, Mordecai is throwing terrible passes straight to Buffalo linebackers. I'm so out on that Wisconsin team if I wasn't already the last, like, four or five months. Washington State here, like, golly, I feel like I'm getting away with robbery. Yeah, before before the season, Liam and I were on opposite ends of the uh, Wisconsin spectrum, and I've had to very quickly change my mind after week one because I agree. I think it was – I mean, at this point, it's give Braylon Allen, Braylon Allen and Ches Blusey the ball and get out of the way because I – receivers did not really be there was a lot of hype entering in the amount of transfers they they brought in and people were really loving them didn't really seem up to snuff the offense still seemed kind of dysfunctional i i'm going it's not one of my two picks but i agree with you i'm taking washington state to win that game and i'm really hoping that we saw flashes of like his cam ward's performance against colorado state we saw flashes of last season just not consistently if he puts that caliber play together this whole season you're throwing yet another elite Pac-12 quarterback in the mix that can get into some shootouts with some people. I really like Washington State to, I mean, potentially start making some noise. If if they play how they did last week against Wisconsin, I, I think they've got a good chance to, to pull off at least an upset or two in the Pac-12 this season. Yeah, I like that play. Uh, I like that pick. Uh, I, like I said this last week, I don't think Phantom Mordecai is good. So it's just another – everyone thought, oh, Wisconsin finally is a quarterback. Bro, if you watch Tanner Mordecai at SMU, that guy lost SMU games, like, a couple times. And they didn't look great against Buffalo, which I was shocked by. I thought they'd go out and stomp Buffalo. Washington State, maybe Cam Ward finally figured it out. I mean, he looked great last week. Um, and it's just – it's an exciting offense against a defense – a Wisconsin defense that's very good. But is Wisconsin going to be able to move the ball with Tanner Mordecai? Because they're going to run, run, run like they always have. They're not going to get a lot of points. They're going to slow the game down. And then if Washington State scores quickly, I don't know if Wisconsin can run with them. So I like that pick for sure. Yeah, and there's also just really not a receiver on Wisconsin that I liked months ago or like today. I don't think they have, like, anything in the receiving room, which does not help at all. Uh, their, their best two players, Braille now, and then I would say Nelson on the offensive line, and then Malusi's a third, so <laughs> – I don't know. Your best two players are two running backs and the offensive tackle. Not sure if that's a recipe for success in 2023. And, and yeah, the Pac-12 is just good, man. It just is. There's 11 teams in this conference that I would go out, that I would recommend people to go out of their way to watch every single week. There's 11 teams, and the lone team that I'll leave out is Arizona State, who still has an exciting true freshman quarterback and, and Jay and Rashad, and they still have Cam Scadaboo at running back. So they're still fun to watch to an extent. Um, let's get to uh, what we're doing next. Yeah, I'll uh, right. my second pick. Well, no. Well, oh, oh. No, there's, there's, a, there's a – There's a wheel. So oh, wheel. Just, oh, the wheel yeah. picks an upset? The, the wheel is being spun. How, you want me to spin it one time or like three? And then we'll use the third one. Everyone else use the first one. What do you want? I feel like it's a wheel with 133 teams. I feel like Every first episode. time would be the same as the third time and just as so random. Is this, is this the team? Well, we need two more picks, right? Yeah. So it'll so we'll give get two, two picks, picks. As the fourth guest. It, it will be. So is and... the wheel picking? Well, the is wheel, the, the wheel, the... it was going to go on a team. And it was just going to go to that game. So it was either going to take the team that is pulling off the upset yeah. or getting upset. And I don't yeah. know if you okay. can see it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Air, Sam Force. Houston. Air, Force is, Air Force is going down? Air Force is losing to Sam Houston, yes. I, I also prefer the saying Sam Houston State. But... All right, Will. So uh, that, that, Sam, it is Sam Houston now, yes. I, I prefer saying Sam Houston State. I don't get it. They're so intent on it being Sam Houston. I really don't get it. I thought Sam Houston State's blur. But eat them up, Cats. The Bearcats <laughs> win this game 13.5-point underdogs. An over-under of a disgusting 
37 and a half. This game's at NRG Stadium as well. Pretty interesting. That's fun. Yeah, so uh, the the wheel sees Ife Adei and friends winning this game after they only lost to BYU 14 nothing. How brutal would it be if the wheel goes 2 and 0 and we go 0 and 6? It would be very on brand. Or I was about to say, would that not just be indicative of college football as a sport? I feel like if anything. <laughs> I don't want to live in that world. I want to get a pick right, man. I want you I, guys to get a pick right. I would love to as well. Um, am I? Am I? Is, is the wheel spoken? Yes. I'm good to go to my second yes. one. Sounds yes, good. You are, yep. And then we'll close that with the wheel at the end. Perfect. Um, all right, my second one, a little bit, you know, uh, decreasing in likelihood, and this is more of a belief pick. But I love how Rich Rod and the Jacksonville State Gamecocks have started out this season. The best Gamecocks in the country, mind you, as well. Um, they are going on the road to take on Coastal Carolina, getting 13 and a half. Coastal Carolina, a, a solid overall first half against UCLA. I am terrified of what I saw just with how dysfunctional that offense looked in the second half. I don't – I'm not sold on Tim Beck yet coming in there and being able to smooth everything over. Grayson McCall in his last season, I wonder if there's some conflict between him being obviously such a veteran quarterback and having been around the program for so long, Beck coming in, being an offensive guy. I wonder about the uh, potentially some discontinuity there. So I'm liking Jacksonville State, uh, 13 and a half, a lot of points definitely, but I think the game has to go on the road, stay undefeated in the FBS. Uh, Coastal Carolina, I think, is still going to be figuring some things out offensively. Uh, it'll be close, and it'll be very tough to pull it off, and Jacksonville State surely has its own concerns to deal with. Uh, quarterback, definitely one of them, but it's a belief pick. I'm going to trust in Rich Rod and his, uh, his grand return to the uh, football bowl subdivision. Yeah, I thought the biggest issue for me – so watching Coastal UCLA is really interesting because, you know, being a UCLA fan or whatever, but also a big Coastal supporter or whatever, and I found myself cheering for both offenses, it seemed. Um, I – man, I it was Tim Beck and his – just his infatuation with just screens and stuff that kind of bothered me inside the red zone – that that really got me bothered. Um, I thought Travis Trickett did a solid job calling the game. I think their biggest issue though was the offensive line that got smoked. And it didn't matter if UCLA was sending three or six. The, the their offensive line was just completely overwhelmed, and it, it didn't look like a group that was that had meshed yet. And it's a group that I think is going to need some time to mesh and come together, and then they'll start playing better. But it, it, Jacksonville State's got two pretty good edge rushers led by J. Rock Swain, who's like 5'10", undersized, but he's quick, he's fast, he gets to the quarterback. So that could be something to look out for in this game. I, I do think Coastal will do a better job, though, this game of being able to move downfield consistently. I think they'll, I think Grayson's going to push to get some more looks in the vertical passing game to Jared Brown to Sam Pickney, and I think that they'll figure something out in the run game. I think it'll be a highly entertaining game. Yeah, man, I like the pick. I mean, I wasn't one that I was looking at personally, but now I'm running the numbers, and uh, I, I, I agree that Coastal struggled on offense against UCLA, which not people – people didn't really expect that. A lot of people had Coastal upsetting UCLA. Um, I'm just glad that they covered the points. Um, but yeah, Jacksonville State just likes to run the ball a lot, and you, uh, Coastal kind of struggled against UCLA running the ball. They weren't uh great against against the run. So if Jacksonville State's able to like ground and pound the entire game and and wear down the Coastal defense, Grayson McCall's gonna have to play some hero ball, and it's really gonna come down to what plays he's given in order to do that. On Rich Rod, I believe in you. I, and it would be so typical if Jacksonville State has this miraculous first season, and then, of course, they're not allowed to compete in any postseason action and mm -hmm. would yet again just put a highlight on the NCAA's rules. And James Madison would be sitting there right there with him complaining about it. So, I don't know. I'll be cheering for him this weekend, that's for sure. So, it's me now? Mm -hmm. So, I think this, this, this should constitute as an upset. If not, then I'll pick a new one. But I know last week we were uh, anti-Pac-12. This week we're pro-Pac-12. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> this one's a weird one. It's a very weird game. Uh, Auburn at Cal. I'm yeah. going with the Cal Golden Bears, who are getting six and a half at home against an Auburn team that isn't very good, in my opinion. I know they stopped UMass, but I thought Cal looked really impressive against North Texas. I know North Texas was my pick last week, one of my picks. Um, and Cal quick just learner. got off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a quick learner. I mean, we, we've talked about Jade not at length here at the transfer portal. And uh, I just think Cal looked really, really good. And Auburn getting set, like being a touchdown favorite on the road, that's a weird game. Like, SEC teams don't really go out to – Pack 12. Like, it's going to be a Pack 12 after dark game. It's the last year of the Pack 12. Like, why not? I think that Jade Knott's going to go off again. I can't really see Auburn running their offense like they did last week. They're playing like a Cal. I thought Cal did a pretty good job on defense, and I don't just don't think Peyton Thorne's the guy. Uh, Cal's explosive. Cal's exciting. I think it's a bit disrespectful that they stopped North Texas the way they did, and now they're a touchdown dog at home. So, I think they win this game. Yeah, they're not getting much respect. I think the key word there was Cal is explosive, and they really are. It's not just Jay Denot who's running 20-plus miles an hour and tweeting, hey, don't post clips of me jogging. I'm not even at my top speed. Don't do that. Hmm. Uh, that you know, Ott's just a special player. Isaiah Fonzie was one of the most decorated players in, in all the FCS at Montana State. Goes to San Jose State never plays it down just never i i felt like he was there for like two weeks or something then he's out gets this opportunity at cal byron cardwell gets hurt now you have jay and Ott and isaiah fonzi which is one of the best one two punches in the country when we're talking about quality running backs that they're, they're they're right up there with some they're not like you know like at that michigan penn state level but they're, they're not that far behind especially in this offense where Spavadol did a very good job of funneling touches for all their running backs, aside from just those two, and to their playmakers out wide like Jeremiah Hunter. I felt like he did what was needed most to get the most explosive plays out of them, just whether it was, it was a highly entertaining offense to watch. I can't wait to watch them this week. And I don't like, I, I was screaming for months like Sam Jackson, Jay and not Jeremiah Hunter, must see TV. Heck. He got hurt. They got done with Finley at quarterback, and if that's what's going to happen this week, if Sam can't go again, if it's going to be Finley, I'm still every bit as confident as it would be if Sam was playing. I think that goes to show how much I love this Cal team and how good I think the Pac-12 is. Because, again, I I don't know if I would put Stanford in that good round yet, so it's Aside from, I think there's 11 watchable teams in this conference. And I think that there's 10 good teams that could legit make a bowl game, and Cal's right there. Yeah, I was about to say you touched on Finley. I also really like just how surprisingly balanced Cal was last week, and really how he played. I thought if he can continue playing at that level, and can, this offense continues to be balanced, and you can't focus on odd in the running game. That's going to bode really well for them. I think I've, I've completely kind of changed my perception of them, honestly, following that North Texas game. And we obviously have a lot learn, more to learn from this game. But I, I agree. I didn't love how Auburn came out last week in some regards. Um, Peyton Thorne was all right. And obviously, you don't take a ton from that game regarding him. But I still – I don't know if I'm if they're completely sold on Thorne being the, uh, you know, season-long starter. I think Ashford's really going to push him, especially if he keeps, you know, putting up these multi-touchdown games. So I think Auburn's still got a lot to figure out there. I think, I mean, it's going to be a really physical game. It's going to be very tough. I think it's going to be low scoring, but um, I've kind of flipped back and forth between and I'm probably still trusting Auburn just because of the, the potential talent, uh, I guess, benefit that they get. But this is a toss up for me. So I, I can certainly see Cal winning. And especially when's the last time Auburn went to play some pac after dark? They, they don't understand how it yeah. even works over there. I don't think. Exactly. It is a very awkward game to take. Uh, another thing I'll I'll point out is Patrick McMorris is like a very, very good DB for Cal. That was a huge acquisition. I don't know how good that defensive unit's going to be. I think they're going to be pretty mediocre. I actually, like, Dave, I was considering taking this for my first one. Then I was like, hold up, let me, let me <laughs> just take the Wazoo one and I'll value it and see what happens. I, I would gladly double down and put this on the graphic for my pick. I know, you know, 
that that did not go so well last year when when some of us uh, doubled down. That. Man, I, I it'd be I, funny if you double down in the wheel picks, Cal, too. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Cal. Uh, no, I I love Cal in this spot. I don't really get them being a touchdown dog. I think it's just more di- disrespect being shown. Uh, mm-hmm. If you go back and listen to our Pac 12 podcast, it's funny because in hindsight, it felt like we took every team to seemingly contend for bull eligibility except for. Colorado and ASU it felt like the other 10 teams or whatever we were like oh yeah they could or not Stanford so nine teams are like hey yeah we, we could actually see them make a bowl game pack 13 oh baby go, go go get another win for for Dave um I don't know I have options now I could take that or I'm not doing this imagine I took Stanford over SC do it. I'm not doing it. Um, <laughs> not doing. It. I don't like Dave laughing like that. Either. That actually made me want to take it. I, I, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do something nuts though. I'm, I'm gonna do a plant plant your flag pick because you know this quarterback's elite, and he looked really really good last week in a game that not many watched. I was watching down me. I was so impressed. Everything I was looking for happened. His ball placement was immaculate. I can't I, – whatever, man. Just give me the ponies going up to Norman, Oklahoma. Give me SMU to shock Oklahoma. I don't Oof. have Oklahoma ranked. SMU's uh, a 15-and-a-half point dog here. Points are going to be scored. But OU ain't scoring the 70 that got Butch crying on the sidelines last, last week. That ain't happening. I like this SMU team. I like them to win their the, the AAC, contend for the, the NY6 Bowl for a group of five team. I'll just, they, they've uh, kind of pushed me into this pick. Uh, I'm swimming in the, the deep end now, and I'm going to rise up with SMU winning this game. So thank you, Dave. Salute. You're welcome. If if they lose, dude, you're canceled. That, that's on me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I I do kind of like it because that's kind of a point spread, fifteen and a half, where it's a bit of a weird one, and that's where like you get caught when you're like in between a touchdown and twenty, and you're at home. And I know that they put up seventy three, and they sh- they should not. They're not the eighteenth best team in the country. They sh- they're not that. They're not. Come on, you beat up Arkansas State, and I thought that SM. I thought Preston Stone looked really good. Last week, I know it's Louisiana it Tech, really but he good. looked really good. And against, it's yeah, yeah. Red Venables is the is the head coach. He's a defensive minded head coach. Oklahoma still can't play defense. They never will be able to. It's just to stink on the name. It's to stink on the school. And I think that he'll be able to throw some dots and he'll keep it close. All I could ask for is it being close and not getting embarrassed, like mm-hmm. Northern I mean. Iowa. And uh, Liam knows that I love this pick because that is my preseason New Year's six, uh, you know, choice is SMU. Uh, and I, I remember saying in one of the one of the preview pods that SMU has those two games, Oklahoma and TCU. I really thought they could split them. Oklahoma was not my first pick out of those two games, but I'll take them winning this weekend. I agree. I was really impressed with how just kind of on fire they came out against Louisiana Tech, really dominated that game on both sides, I feel like. And Stone's been kind of the the chosen one, I feel like, for a while that they that they've been waiting on, and this is the season that he has to uh, to break out. What a better stage to do that than in Norman going up against the Sooners. I again, a lot of points, but I I like that pick. I won't pick it myself, but I, I like it. Thank you. I, I had to get creative after uh, I was just swimming in the water. So let me let me spin this wheel. Let's see what the wheels got. It's got Sam Houston over Air Force. And now it this is what has, I was looking forward to. Okay, it it I it landed on Air Force. And I thought that might happen. It actually landed on Air Force. Again. Is it again? Yeah, this rigged. It on Air Force again. <laughs> it's rigged. I when I when I because it says like close or remove, I was like, like I could remove oh, you it. Should've, yeah, you should have removed it. Yeah. I thought it, it's one in a thirty three. Check, 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 check the destiny. settings. Is it on as random as possible? Yes. All right. I, I thought there's no way it hits Air Force again, so I'm not gonna remove it like there. So so let's see if it hits Air Force again, it's brain nuts, but there's no way. Okay, this is not funny. This is not funny. Again? 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Penn State, 38 <laughs> point underdogs to win at Arkansas. Of course, on a day where Parker comes in here and says, I know Liam always likes to get his Kent State rants in there. The wheel wants me to do that it. I can't do anything rigged. about it. That I can't do rigged. anything about it. The wheel says Air Force, Air Force, Kent State. The wheel is taking the worst team in the FBS to beat Arkansas. I'm not sure what else to say here, except I guess I had I do have some things to say. Kent State had their opportunities last week against UCF. As someone who went on the old TikTok and told everyone, hey, guys, there's free money to be made in UCF first half minus 21. And I was sweating that for no reason. That's because UCF's pass defense was quite lazy and really stuns me that they're a favorite uh, this week against Boise State. I really don't get that. I think Boise State no, is, is going to be a carve. But Kent State had their looks in the passing game, and they never were able to take advantage of it at any time. And that's pretty worrying. I actually like what I saw from Krishan McCray, though. He looked pretty good for a redshirt freshie. I I, I just th- – this team is so bad, man. Uh, the, the, good luck, Wheel. Worst team in I America. Missed. That's that's the most poetic ending I could have imagined, to be honest. It's pretty yeah, beautiful. It's... Are, we, are we throwing out – um? Yeah, give some other ones, ones we like, but then they... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah well, was we'll one of them play. Kent State? No. I, think uh, I guess Miami, we could recap. I, oh, you want to recap first and we'll throw them out? No, nah, you could go first. All right. I think Miami can beat Texas A&M for sure. You're sick. I think Miami can definitely win that game. I think both teams are better than they were last year, and I think Miami can pull it off. And I know this, this hurts the brand a little bit, but I think Texas State could pull off another upset at UTSA. Mm. I don't know if it hurts the brand. I we have a pretty strong GJ Kinney brand going now. That's true. We do love GJ Kinney. I think it evens each other out. It's a battle of the just brands. On the brands. Yeah. Battle of the brands. Yeah, but any, I love the Bobcats. They're going to be awesome this year. Any for you, Parker? Maybe you and the for Michigan you were dabbling with. I um I, I would agree with Texas State, but yes, I had uh, Eastern Michigan going on the road, getting twenty and a half against Minnesota. Man, Minnesota's offense is not very good. And honestly, they got so incredibly lucky to win that game last week. If they weren't playing Nebraska, they don't win that game, even if they're playing Kent State. I'm going to be honest. If they're down 10-3 that late in the game and playing how they did, asterisk. Um, that being said, Eastern Michigan, not the not the greatest uh, week one showing from them. Uh, I, and I'm drawing a blank. I saw it earlier on who they played. But um Eastern Michigan yeah. played Howard, who plays Howard, yes. Northwestern soon. Interesting. But, yeah, I just I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I, those low-scoring type games, I feel like Eastern Michigan can get a field goal or so late and pull it off. I just – I didn't – Minnesota's – they lost some of the running backs, and then obviously the passing attack really didn't seem to improve to go along with that. So I see the offense taking a step back this season. I also like to look at how Northwestern beat Nebraska first game of last season and proceed to not win another game. Minnesota won't do that, but I have a feeling that might be one of the highlights of their season in compared to what will happen on the stretch. I just don't think Minnesota's offense is going to be okay. I, yeah. I, I, I'm I a sicko for having hope. I think it's going to be okay. I really liked how they utilized Brevin Spanford and Corey Crooms and Daniel Jackson emerged like – I still think there's something there, but Cal Command is really did struggle, so I am worried about that. But I think with more reps, he'll get better and they'll be okay. I, I have a sicko's optimism there. Uh, I mean, like, they're my, what, preseason number 18 team? I sure have dropped them from the top 25. I ain't afraid to do that. Uh, you will not catch me ranking a Big, a big Ten West team for quite a while. <laughs> Zero interest there. I can't believe yeah. that we put out a top 25 that has Iowa ranked. I, I feel secondhand embarrassment that we ranked the Hawkeyes. Agreed. If I had to I have look a, for I have one. A... Okay, you go, you go. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just want to bring no, up a good. sickos one. I don't think it's going to happen, which is why I didn't pick it. But how funny would it be if Nebraska went into Boulder and beat Colorado after all this, after all this hype, man? 
I mean, I love Colorado. I love Dion. I think they're awesome. But it would just be very funny if Nebraska went in there and beat them. It would be. It would, I, yeah, it would I don't be think it's going to happen. I had someone today uh, trying to convince me that that, that was going to happen and say that, you know, oh, Nebraska's going to be able to score with them. You know, they're going to – offense going to look a lot better next week. I was like, I I can't buy it. But, you know. I mean, I'm sure they will because other than, other than Travis Hunter, the Colorado defense was not impressive. Because I think Chandler Moore stinks, and that offense was still able to move the ball. Nebraska will have success moving the ball, but how good is their defense really? They played Minnesota, who runs the ball a hundred times a game, so we'll see. But yeah, it'd be very well, funny. It, it, it was not. I, I don't even know what to say, man. I I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. As a matter of fact, I mean, um, yeah. There is something to be said about TCU's defense and how they looked. I would imagine Nebraska will at least be a step above what TCU's defense was last week, but we'll see. Nebraska tends to surprise us every single week, for better or worse. Yeah, Yeah. that's why. They'll probably lose by a by a point again. (laughs) That that Morris had so much hype going in the last year on the low key end of of like inside the TCU well and bad moles and everything and. What a disappointment he's been, unfortunately. He, just, he was bad, man. He just looked he, bad. He was if bad he last year in the Colorado game. He was bad this year. If he doesn't make some of those throws, they win that game. If he just – like the I, one pick Travis Hunter was for, incredible. Yeah, you can't fault that, him yeah. for that. But he threw – he just threw some bad balls, man, that just should have been completions. He did. Uh, um, I guess one of them that – so I would have taken Idaho over Nevada, but the issue is – Last year, I took Incarnate Word over Nevada, and what happened was Incarnate, yeah, I remember Word, that. <laughs> Incarnate Word ends up being a three-point favorite. favorite. Yeah, and we didn't we didn't know that would like happen. So like we were thinking, dude. like, oh, Nevada would probably be like a, a five-point favorite. No, Incarnate Word was the favorite at Nevada. So- and oh, I expect man. Idaho to again be like a three and a half or more favorite against Nevada. So. Uh, you won't catch me going there. I'm looking though. The raging yeah, the Cajuns. Of this show last year. The raging Cajuns minus six against Old Dominion looks like a pretty good bet to take the Cajuns. I'll just throw that, that out there. Ricky, um, Ricky Ronnie's Monarchs. I actually kind of like. Though. How do I miss? How do we miss that one? That's I a think, good one. I think, I think Old Dominion is really bad. That's a really good one, actually. Because Virginia Tech is not that good at the end of the day either. So Old no, Dominion. I, I think Old does not matter. Bad. Yeah, um, that was the uh, James Franklin coordinator bowl. It was. It was. Brent so, against Ricky Ronnie. Yeah, like oh, Louisiana yeah. being a six point favorite there. I, I think I'd hammer the Cajuns. Um, the, I, I guess if Texas Tech was starting Bayron Morton, I'd hop on the train. Of course. But again, you will never ever catch me backing Tyler Shuck, the former Duck. It never makes sense. <laughs> He stinks. We saw – do you guys see the stat is like let, – let me find this. I brought this up with Ed Home on the podcast yesterday, and then he was like, okay, now I'm pretty much just agreeing with you that Baron Morden needs to be the guy. Um, Tyler Shuck had a clean pocket on 80% of dropbacks last night, uh, the other day. 51.3 grade, 6.8 turnover worthy play rate. Not too good. 80% clean pocket rate and put out that performance. I don't what know about the revenge miss. factor against his former no, team? There is zero factor, revenge no. factor when you're just not a good quarterback, no. Um, <laughs> the wheel would like what to about... give the wheel would like to give a pick that <laughs> oh, the wheel apparently sees Washington on upset alert but wasn't too confident in Tulsa to uh, actually give that out as a play. And then okay. the wheels, the wheels other fringe pick is oh, it was so close. That was gonna land you know, the it's Utah gang upset by Baylor. The wheel sees redemption for Dave Veranda. Fair enough. I have a dumb question. Mm-hmm. Did, I'm just looking at the Curtis Work had benched. He did not get benched. He is he hurt? Just, so he re-injured himself in the San Diego State game, and they opted okay. not to play him out of safety concerns last against week. Against my Sharks? 
against the Sharkies. They didn't play him. They didn't play Sam Wigslaws, and they didn't play some other key players. I see. Okay. They went I was with a straight up. They went straight up load management NBA yeah, man, mode against was, the Sharkies. That was. I was like, I, I didn't. I didn't pay attention because uh, I it was like barely on. I was like, all right. Like, why is this game close? I did not know North wouldn't find. Yeah. But, so, go Sharks. Hashtag Shark Nation. Follow at LIU Football. <laughs> Let, let's recap the picks, then we'll get out of here. Parker? Well, first off, one was Cincinnati over Pittsburgh on the road, getting seven and a half, and then Jacksonville State over the Chanticleers, getting 13 and a half on the road as well. We're going with Matthew Sluka and the mighty Holy Cross Crusaders to take down Boston College. And then we are going – what's my second pick? Oh, that's right. The Cal Golden <laughs> Bears, who are dog – I just threw out so many picks that we got. Cows, again, for some reason, plus six and a half at home against Auburn. Weird Pac-12 after dark game. Cal wins that game. And I got Washington State over Wisconsin and the ponies of SMU over Oklahoma. Go Mustangs. And the wheel. Oh, yeah. The wheels of Sam Houston over airports and Kent State over Arkansas. You got to respect it. What are those? What's the wait, before before we go? I forgot to do this last show. Oh we yeah, got to, uh, the parlay. The parlay. Yeah. Hey man, while you cook that up, I already know we're all going to and zero aside from the wheel. I'm already looking forward to picking Mississippi State against LSU next week. So don't steal <laughs> that for me. I'm already looking forward to that day. Hold on, sorry. I I'm just gonna parlay the wheels picks just so we save time. Yeah. No, I, 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 don't, I don't hate the Mississippi State pick either. LSU starting out 0-2, and then they come Kent to the week 5 and they also lose. On the DraftKings Sportsbook, Kent State does not even have a uh, money line. So yeah, they, that's, they that's where we're at. Everyone, yeah. All right. <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll see you uh, next week, next week. Yeah, I can see it. Because they those fellas ain't losing the Grambling. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Grambling I State, I prefer to say. Another school that dropped the state and doesn't make sense Always going to call him Grambling State. Uh, no, yeah. I can't do Holy Cross in New York. I'm going to do Washington State. This is great radio right now. <laughs> Mississippi State got a tough one this weekend. It's Arizona, though, anyways. They got to they gotta think about that first. I, I do. I, I Look, again, I'd be lying if I uh, considered it. I Wait, just considered going straight up Pac-12. Uh, SMU. Okay, we're almost there. Almost thanks for hanging in. I thanks for hanging yeah. in, listeners. <laughs> Looking back, Usually I would do this. Too, I was doing this. Uh, all right, so it's like only five picks. So here, here we have. This is going to win you a lot of money when it hits. Cal, Wazoo, Jacksonville State, SMU, Cincinnati. Five legs, all money lines. Ten bucks wins you ten grand. I was going to guess seven k, but okay. We should 10, guess seven hundred thirty. $737.61. So I'm going to place that right now. Thank you very much. And we'll see you guys next week. You did yeah. not place that. <laughs> $10,000 richer. Oh, man. The ne- next week, we'll guess how much 10 wins on the parlay. We'll, we'll have to give a <laughs> yeah, guess. That's a good idea. Good it's call. Gonna, it, how bad is it going to be when one of it actually hits and none of oh, us wait. put money on it? Did I add... Then we're going to start putting money on them every week, and then we're going to never win. Well, that's what we should do. We should all just pitch in, like, $2 and be like, all right. I, I didn't even add the wheels cut. pick. If you <sighs> All right, add Sam Houston. There. 10, 10 pays, 60K. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I like. All right, let's put 100 bucks on that. 100 <laughs> That's a 25-cent play. A 25-cent play? Okay. Well, appreciate y'all for listening watching and just enjoying the chaos of the show much like the art of the upset we'll see you next week again like subscribe share your favorite upsets for the week make fun of ours we don't care we're here for the vibes and hopefully wins we don't want to be losers same reasons we were losers last week